I've cheated multiple times in my life. All of these affairs occurred during long-term serious relationships, typically around the second or third year of their duration. When I was with someone for a while, I'd often start feeling like that person was limiting my options and that they were with me out of habit, rather than love. I never really thought about resolving this issue differently. I found new partners in various places. Once, I met a pharmacist at a pharmacy. Other times, it was at parties or through friends of friends. There were even a couple of instances involving colleagues from work. I'll elaborate on one of those. At that point, I was already three years into a relationship, living with my boyfriend and working at an advertising agency. A new copywriter joined our team. We became involved, and our intimate relationship began in the meeting room. I started staying late at work. I didn't bring him home since my boyfriend was freelancing at the time. Occasionally, I'd meet the lover at his place, but he lived with his parents, which wasn't very convenient. Then I wanted to end this affair and pretend like nothing had happened. However, the lover began blackmailing me with our personal correspondence. I couldn't just leave, so I waited for things to somehow resolve themselves. Interestingly, my boyfriend was incredibly jealous and already suspected me of cheating. I dreaded the culmination of this situation paranoia was eating me alive. One day, my lover and I were hugging in the subway when we accidentally bumped into my boyfriend. That was enough. That night, I had to move in with a friend. I started dating the lover, and he became my boyfriend. He was quite an eccentric person, and the relationship with him posed a serious challenge for me. I cheated on him as well, more than once. I changed jobs and, at a company event, I met a guy with whom I subsequently cheated. I visited him at his place. Once, when my boyfriend wasn't home, I even brought a new lover to my place and introduced him to my neighbors the next morning. Then I pretended like nothing happened. My boyfriend had no idea. Another time, I cheated on him during a fight. My boyfriend said he wouldn't be able to spend the evening with me, so I went to visit an acquaintance I had only met once before. I struggled with very low self-esteem and, for some reason, tried to improve it through external relationships, flings on the side, and sex with whomever. Stable, good relationships weren't enough for me, I quickly lost faith in their value. After these escapades, I'd feel good for a short while, as if I had earned a high grade. Extramarital affairs are truly draining, and after I got what I wanted, I aimed to end them. After all, I didn't actually need these particular people, I was just using them to compensate for my internal deficiencies. I had a college marriage we tied the knot six months after we met, and just about a month and a half after the wedding, I became pregnant. After that, things followed the usual pattern my husband worked while I stayed home with the child. It was both physically and emotionally challenging for me, especially because I had just finished college and hadn't even had a chance to work. Most of my friends were engrossed in exciting projects and couldn't quite grasp my motherhood situation. There were no grandparents around, and I hadn't managed to make friends in the city where I had moved to live. My husband started going on frequent business trips and even worked on weekends. I experienced severe burnout, and our relationship became a constant string of arguments. Then things took a turn for the worse. My husband began coming home drunk. I was filled with anger and a sense of worthlessness. One day, when my husband returned home in the early morning hours, I decided to take revenge. Through a messaging app, I connected with a guy and our conversation quickly turned intimate. We set a date to meet. I had already arranged for a babysitter in advance. By then, I was doing some part-time work and spent almost a month's income on the babysitter. I went to the home of my new acquaintance 
and that same evening, we became intimate. It was quite mediocre. I didn't derive any pleasure or experience from it. To add to that, he turned out to be not a very good person. He knew all about my difficult situation, yet he didn't even offer to drive me back home or spend some time together after the physical encounter. My husband never found out about this meeting of mine, and he never will because we eventually got divorced. All I managed to accomplish was adding more emotional problems to my plate. I regretted this action for a very long time and only forgave myself after about five years. I was 33 years old, and at that time, I had been married for about seven years. At some point, I realized that in our relationship, my husband and I had become more like relatives than husband and wife. Initially, sex had become routine, and then it vanished altogether. A month, two, three, six months passed. I couldn't understand why we had been without intimate relations for so long, so I decided to talk to my husband. Did you expect passion after so many years of marriage? That's not how it works. Ask your friends. I'm sure they're no better off. My husband dismissed me, but I didn't give up. Despite having two children, I tried to arrange romantic evenings, candlelit dinners, trips to concerts. I even attempted to persuade him to go to a countryside hotel to rekindle the passion. My husband saw all my efforts and unintentionally let slip if you really want to, I'm not against it. But there's a condition, I must never find out. One day, my friend invited us to a party, but my husband, as usual, declined. He fairly bluntly told me, you want to have fun, so go ahead. I'll stay with the kids. At the party, I met an interesting man who caught my eye. We struck up a conversation, and I realized I was intrigued by him. He turned out to be married, and for me, interacting with married men was taboo. But we were enjoying each other's company that evening. We both understood that the passion had long faded in our respective families. After the party, we shared a kiss, and then a fervent exchange of messages began. He was an intelligent and creative individual, and I could say I experienced orgasms just from our messages alone. Shortly after, real orgasms followed. We began secretly meeting. Our affair lasted around five to six months. During this time, I felt desired, self-assured, and vibrant again. I started exercising, lost weight, and was filled with inner energy. In my family life, I also felt much better. Nevertheless, I made the decision to end the affair for several reasons. Firstly, that initial passion had faded. Secondly, I was constantly plagued by guilt, both towards my husband and towards my lover's wife. I believed I had no right to betray another woman like that. I accidentally saw her photo on social media through decret leave, pandemic restrictions, remote working husband, all these turned my life into something dull and monotonous. The news of a meetup with my high school friend stirred me up. You're so excited, it's like you're expecting a lover around the corner. My husband joked that day. He couldn't have guessed that the mother of an 11 month old son would lose her composure after a meeting with some old classmates. Once upon a time, I was infatuated with a boy who sat behind me in class. I remember styling my hair differently every day just to catch his eye. One day, I heard a voice from behind. That's the prettiest one, go for that style. Our school crush never blossomed into anything, but even in college, I often reminisced about that guy. We never interacted after school, though there were plenty of opportunities. At the class reunion, at least half the class showed up. We were seated far apart, yet our gazes met for a moment, and a shiver ran down my spine. From that moment on, I was convinced there would be some sort of continuation. And indeed there was. The only option for our meetings was hourly rate hotels. The first time, 
It was embarrassing to go there, but I wanted it so much. He had a family, two kids. I had a husband and a little son, whom I had to leave with a relative whenever I needed to be away. I twisted the truth like a snake on hot coals. For a woman on maternity leave, this was an incredibly tough task. The affair lasted several months. During this time, I lost over 10 kilograms and felt incredibly attractive. My husband complimented me, saying that motherhood suited me. It's strange how he didn't notice the obvious. Maybe I was so audacious in my cheating that he couldn't have fathomed his wife capable of it. It was the lover who suggested ending our encounters, something I hadn't expected at all and was initially even offended by. His wife turned out to be more perceptive than my spouse and grew suspicious. I had to draw the line. Yes, after some time, he called and proposed meeting again, but by then, I had cooled off. Do I regret it? In a way, yes, because infidelity is despicable, and I admit that. On the other hand, I console myself with the thought that without this episode, I probably wouldn't have shed the extra weight so quickly. And I looked at my husband with different eyes.